video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. The Atlanta universe or the Atlantaverse can be a very complicated space. If you haven't watched it 10 or more times like myself or other Atlanta fans, then you have missed a few things and that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Some time ago, I made a video called the Atlanta Parallel Universe Theory basically pointing out the many things that puts it in a parallel universe and somebody commented but every show is a parallel universe that's what makes it tv <sighs> these kinds of comments always disappoint me like the person is limited in their own imagination these are the kind of people who will watch tv or read a book and it's just a show or just a book if done right, any kind of media can be the perfect gateway into a world that makes you laugh, cry, anger you, or change your way of thinking or the way you feel about a certain subject. In short, it can affect you mentally and emotionally. And well, that makes it more than just a show. And yes, it's true. Most of all TV shows exist in a parallel universe, but a lot of them, if not almost all of them, are bound by rules. For example, no one in France can fly, no one in Grey's Anatomy can just come back from the dead, and no one in Breaking Bad is bulletproof. Each of the shows I just named, among many others, are bound by the rules. Crime and detective TV shows take leniencies with the law to pack cases into an hour-long story, but they don't stretch too far from real life, unless the detective has a quirk. But that's another video for another day. Dramas and most sitcoms just talk about everyday life. Yeah, some things are exaggerated, but still on solid ground. The only type of shows that aren't bound by these ordinary rules are sketch comedy and cartoons. And Atlanta sort of fits in the middle of those two with elements of everything else. But the wonderful thing about it, it doesn't fit cleanly anywhere, which is why so many people love it and are confused by it. In this series of videos, I like to dub the Atlantaverse series. I will take a look at different characters and events that push and pull on the walls of reality and sort of explain why this show is so important to the generation and hopefully turn a few people who aren't into Atlanta fans. And please, I ask you, if you're going to watch these videos, do it with an open mind and maybe tap into that childlike imagination you once had. Before I can get into this video, guys, please do me a favor, click that like button, and if you have not, please subscribe and make sure that you click that notification bell so you do not miss a video. So the first video in the series is about Darius and where he falls in the alignment chart and why it is so important to what kind of character he is. I believe that Darius is first and foremost a true neutral character. Now I know a lot of y'all about to ask, what is he talking about? Well, being a true neutral, is a part of the alignment system. This is a system used primarily in Dungeons and Dragons to categorize the ethics and morals of your character or characters in the game, including non-playable characters. And if you wanna know more information, please click the link down below and watch the video about this amazing explanation of something I didn't even realize was a thing about the alignment system. There are nine categories, lawful good, neutral good, chaotic good, lawful neutral, true neutral, chaotic neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, and chaotic evil. We will focus on just one of those today and why I think Darius fits there perfectly. Some who understand the alignment system may argue that Darius fits better in lawful good or even neutral good, but looking at Darius as his own entity, Darius isn't really there to do good. He's just sort of there to do. Now the reason I call him his own entity is because, well, he's completely independent as far as his own existence as the show is concerned. Darius's existence isn't affected by anybody in the show. Van is affected by Ern because, well, they have or had a relationship and have a child together. Ern is affected by Paperboy and Van. Paperboy is affected by Ern and Darius. But watching for the past two seasons, we see that Darius really isn't affected by anyone in the show. At least, they don't have a long-term effect on him. I came to this conclusion after watching the Teddy Perkins episode, and on this seventh or eighth time watching it, I noticed something at the end. He seemed sad. Now at first I thought it was because of the loss of life for the two brothers, Benny and Teddy, but looking at it now, it was neither. His sadness was for the piano. Now I'm not saying that he doesn't feel a little bad, but how does their death change his day? It really doesn't. The one thing he wanted though, the only thing he really cared about in that episode was the piano. And when you watch that scene, 
they even show his reaction after seeing it being taken away more than likely for evidence. Let's put the alignment chart up against a few episodes so you can further understand why I think Darius is true neutral. In the episode, the strides in effect, Aaron has to get some money for today for Van and his daughter. So he decides upon his cell phone for a few bucks. Darius convinces him to purchase a sword and trade it up all the way to breeding some cane corso puppies. This infuriates Ern because he needs the money now, not later. A fact that Darius knew the entire day. Now, looking at it, you could say that Darius was doing lawful good, but everything he is doing is somewhat illegal, so that's out. What about neutral good or chaotic good? Well, he isn't devoted to Ern, and nor does he have any ill regard towards him, so those are out as well. What about lawful neutral? Well, that means he would have had to have acted with the law in order to help and he didn't. And as far as chaotic neutral, Darius wouldn't have really cared one way or another if Ern would have got any help for his family. And we can knock out all the evil alignments because, you know, he's Darius. So what does that leave us with? You can look at many different events in the show where Darius demonstrates his true neutral alignment. So how does this help us understand Darius? Well, for me, that in a world as crazy as Atlanta, Darius is balanced. Now, unless they tell us different in seasons three and four, Darius is a balance between worlds, the balance between success and failure. The thing about balance is that once it shifts one way or the other too much, it's thrown off. This is why I feel that Darius doesn't get involved or he can't. Let's roll it all the way back to the first episode, The Big Bang. Darius sat there as everything happened. The guy breaking the side mirror, the confrontation, the gun coming out. Ern tried to talk Paperboy into calming down. But where was Darius? Why doesn't he get involved? Why does he seem to just go with the flow and things just work out in the end? Can you think of another character who's true neutral, who also doesn't get involved, but instead just watches and everything just sort of works out? Now, I know if you think Darius being the Oracle is sort of me messing with you, I'm not. It's quite easy for a lot of people to just call him a spiritual pothead. But think about what he does and how Darius says things. I mean, look at the last episode of season two. Ern is on his last shot. Listen, I know that he gives Ern some type of reassurance, but really, think for a second. If you really, really, really were going through something at work at home, and if you went to a friend for some real advice or some words of wisdom, and they were like, well, bill is bill. Negro, are you for real? Darius knows way more than we think he does and some of his words are confusing and some of his ways are mystery. I even think that's why him and Paperboy beefed that one time. He probably asked Darius for some straight answer and Darius hit him with some 90s slam poetry type stuff. So to wrap this video up, Darius is true neutral. With elements of a spiritual guide, not just to Paperboy to earn, but to you, the audience member. Paperboy, Earn, and Van all have paths that we've seen or seen examples of that they walk each episode. Earn is trying to build a new career, Paperboy trying to make it big in the industry while still maintaining his essence, and Van is trying to take care of herself and her child wanting the best for her and rethinking her own career. But then Darius is just Darius. His character's place in the show doesn't really fit any character TV show archetype. He's just truly balanced. But what happens when a true neutral character is pushed into another direction? What happens when Darius becomes unbalanced? This video was brought to you by ExpressVPN. Why should you use it? Well, the main reason I do it is so I can watch different shows when and wherever I want. I switch to Japan and I get zombie movies and TV shows that make The Walking Dead look like Care Bears. I switch to Italy and I find some awesome old school westerns. I switch to Britain or the Middle East, and I can find some pretty funny African sitcoms. All in all, when you can't find something new to watch, and you can't afford a plane ticket, just switch your VPN safely and securely, and view the goodness they're watching all around the world. Click the link in the description box below and get three free months of ExpressVPN. Thank you guys so very much.
thank you guys so very much for watching. I truly appreciate you. If you wouldn't mind, click that like button. Subscribe if you have not. Make sure you click that bell so you do not miss an episode. And why don't you guys start a dialogue in the comments down below that I can join in. Let's talk about Atlanta, this video, Darius, and other characters that we love and want to see more of, hopefully soon next year in Atlanta Season 3. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I love you, and I'll see you guys next time.